Is anyone surprised? It's so sad to think about that we have two of the biggest wrestling promotions and neither can bother to properly train a bodybuilder. I have only seen the first three matches of Clash at the Castle because I had to spend time with family yesterday, but these three matches alone were embarrassing to watch, but it had more to do with terrible creative and bad decisions overall more so than the in-ring action. Especially with Alba Fire and Isla Dawn winning the women's tag team titles for no other reason than being Scottish. That is a joke. Triple H can't afford to continue booking the way he does. He is wasting everyone's time. I am in the middle of making a video about Triple H and his uneventful tenure as Chief Operating Officer. But right now, once again, we have to talk about Cargill. Triple H was the one that put her in this position. He decided she was going to be a fixture of the whole company without her proving a damn thing. She was signed to the company, and for weeks, we had Michael Cole shoving her down our throats as if she's Wonder Woman or Princess Diana. It's not her fault that Triple H props her up like she's a goddess when everybody very well knows, she has the in-ring knowledge of the great Kali and she needs time to refine her skills. Asuka, Io Sky, Kairi Sane, if international talent that's been wrestling already for over 10 years need developmental, why doesn't Jade Cargill need developmental? Why have a developmental system if Triple H decides to not use it to help the talent that needs it the most? You make developmental seem like a joke. We all seen her AEW material. It's not like it's any secret. She is very green, there's a lot she needs to learn, and she has no business flying off the top rope like she's Rey Mysterio. And then we have Michael Cole playing damage control stating, she recovered beautifully, yeah if that were top dollar you'd hamper on him until the day he was released. She looks imposing enough that she could simply do powerhouse moves without relying on leaving her feet. If China ever did a diving move off the top rope, odds are it was onto a man, a large man that was in a position to catch her. This video of mine aged like fine wine. Big Show was raw and green until Vince decided he needed to go to OVW and stop doing top rope moves. Even moves that Jade does that don't look like botches, still look subpar. This fall away slam did not look good. It looked like Zoe Stark and Alba Fire fell right on top of her, and Jade Cargill springs back up as if she's at a Taylor Swift concert. If you want to do a move where you are carrying two women at the same time, it needs to look good. Beth Phoenix had done it before. And we're not even done with Jade Cargill yet, because every time she does stinger splashes, they look awkward and goofy. She doesn't look fast, she doesn't look athletic, she looks like a high school boy doing his first ever football tackle. We've had many big men in WWE that did corner splashes much better, and they look more impactful, such as the Boogeyman, the Godfather, Brodus Clay, Viscera, and even Otis. They all knew how to run to the corner to pull off the move. They were likely all taught by trainers for how to make the move look impressive. Obviously Triple H doesn't. You simply don't allow talent to do moves that look horrible. Speaking of, what is this? If you don't know what move this is, you'd have no idea what the hell is even going on here. Bianca is doing a 450 splash, where she leaps off the turnbuckle, flips forwards, and does a splash onto her opponent. Someone might say, well she's landing on two women instead of one, so the window to actually clear the flip is much smaller. Okay, then why even attempt it if it's much harder to do? She doesn't even land it cleanly. She overshot the move, so she's flying a lot farther than necessary, and despite the greater distance she travels, she still can't get a full rotation without her knees making contact with Shayna's back first. Bianca's been doing this move for 3 to 4 years now, and she still can't do it well. Why do it? She has no form, she flops like a fish, and hardly ever does she land where she is supposed to. Stomach to stomach. I've seen Chris Statlander do the 450 before. Stomach to stomach. And she is 5 feet 9 inches. She can do this move because she has the proper training and the proper background for it. She used to be an acrobat. Cargill and Bianca are bodybuilders, by no means should they pretend to be acrobats. And I get it. Taker's not an acrobat. Drew McIntyre isn't an acrobat. They both do dives to the outside. Mistakes have happened before, such as WrestleMania 25. The moves however are done safely and likely they have been practiced many times to make sure it looks good when performed on TV. 
Drew will usually do his plancha onto multiple men, rather than just one. Taker can land on his feet if he feels he needs to, and it can still look impressive because with how he leaps, he still makes it look convincing that his frame and weight is still enough to knock a man like Mark Henry down. They plan the spot before the match happens, and they decide on how can Taker do the spot so that it's not reckless. Damien Priest has an idea for a move, and this happens. So he has done this dive before. But just because Damien's done the move before doesn't mean he should be doing it. What is supposed to happen is that he fits a foot onto the second rope, and holds onto the top rope so he can flip onto his opponent. Lookadors have done dives before where they bounce off the middle rope onto the outside. Damien is too big and heavy to be bouncing off the second rope. It's because of his size that he doesn't get the rebound necessary to leap as intended, so his foot gets caught, and we're thankful at least he didn't suffer a serious injury as a result. I don't understand this idea of big men selling excessively for small men, as well as big men pretending to be cruiserweights and thinking they can do moves like a smaller man can. He can clear the top rope without needing to use the second rope. Triple H needs to set boundaries. Boundaries are not a bad thing. Boundaries ensure your product has quality, even when it comes to the in-ring action. And shouldn't just stop there. Give Cargill developmental. I don't get Triple H's obsession over her. She's not that great, and she needs time to refine her abilities. Is he so afraid that his other favor J. Egg Bianca Belair might leave one year? Who cares? You can figure out storylines for Cargill when she's actually proven she is competent. Of course, it's not her fault that she hasn't gotten adequate enough training. You have the resources, use them. You put her in point B without starting her. In point A, and you act surprised that things like this happen on a world stage. Nobody asked you to be Tony Khan Jr., and nobody asked for AEW Jr. You should aspire to be a better Vince McMahon, not a quote better Tony Khan, 